Hey, listen here, Mr. Diddler. We got you on a trump of charges. But we need to know what happened to Biggie Smalls. The streets are saying you killed him. You want some time cut? You gotta tell me the truth, pup. All right, all right. Let me talk to my lawyer. I'm sitting here reminiscing In the dark interrogation room tripping My lawyer like Sean, I'ma get it dismissed in That's if and only if you ready to get the flipping So cut the bullshit, no Scotty Pippin I asked well what they wanna know He said tell them about Biggie I get to thinking first, can I tell them about 50? I hate that nigga, we got a rather bad history It's no way out, snitching will lead you to a victory I pull my chair up, I think, then I say cool The story starts way back in 1992 Uptown Records, my job was to play the back Until I heard about a rapper that was big, fat, and black I paired his ass with Craig Mack, and that was that I got fired from Uptown and took them boys with me Created Bad Boy Records, signed Craig Mack and Biggie Mr. Smalls dropped in 1994 Ugly ass nigga, but the women loved them all Secretly, I wish I was the one that they adore Love Biggie, but I need the floor Fast forward, man, my slave deals was popping Year after year I had superstars dropping Even grab Mace in the locks in 94, 95, that's when the streets got hot We started beefing with Biggie's homie Tupac Chug Knight was his owner, yep he owned Death Row They say I killed his bodyguard Jake, but you never know Somehow I had to make Big and Pac go from friend to foe Tried to set him up at Quad Studio Somehow, the little runt survived the hollow tips La Goofy Man Shot himself inside the hip, but died later. Beefing with the Southside Crips. Crips that was on my payroll, damn, ain't that a trip? Moving along now that Pac's fate was sealed. That shit scared Biggie, now he wants out the deal. I looked him in his lazy eye and said, I'll keep it real. Matter of fact, I'll be matter of fact. Somebody's gotta die before you leave this record contract. He should've known in his life was a rap We went out west, yeah that choice wasn't the best But I had to make big boy promo life after death Pretty ironic that name would manifest On that trip, the Notorious would take his last breath He got shot on the strip for everyone to see How can it be? I'm thinking mo album sales for me <laughs> Take that, take that <laughs> I done went about 30 years Knowing that I killed that man And now here come Rolling Stone all in my business Talking about they did a six month investigation We know it's a 20 v1 And Miss Viola Or whatever Biggie's mom name is You think you can slap the daylight out of me You better refer to Cassie <laughs> I would hate to see you get hit in the head with a vase Bad <laughs> Smoking this biggie pack Alright man, while we are in the midst of Diddy in limbo About what his charges may or may not be While being presented to the grand jury It's been another story that's been heating up And Biggie's mama has something to say about Biggie But we'll get to that in a minute Because Rolling Stone has been making some noise with their six month investigation that they put on paper that they did on the diddler himself now one of the stories is that biggie was killed by the diddler and they're saying that biggie was unalived because he wanted to leave bad boy records now this is what the article says so i don't have to do all the explaining it says insiders have confirmed and told Rolling Stone that Biggie was indeed preparing to leave Bad Boy Records before his death and that Biggie's lawyers were entangled in a legal battle with Diddy to get Biggie back his publishing rights before he was unalive. According to insiders, Biggie had grown increasingly frustrated with Combs and was seeking more control over his career. Photographer Monique Bunn, who was close with Biggie, stated Biggie was absolute absolutely about to leave puff i know for a fact because he told me that another source added everybody wanted to leave puffy everybody leaves him the dissatisfaction was compounded by legal battles over biggie's publishing rights which his attorneys were attempting to reclaim from combs further straining their relationship this excerpt is from rolling stone's recent article bad boy for life sean combs history of violence now with that being said, 
Gene Deal has been saying this for years. Gene Deal was a longtime bodyguard of Sean P. Diddy Combs. And he's been saying for years, hey, that night wasn't right. He unalived Biggie himself. He set it up. Let's take a look. Somebody from Bad Boy got to die tonight, y'all. And he also said that to you. you. You said on one of your tapes that he don't care who die. He just yeah, won. he said that. He, he, he said that his exact words. And listen, nobody believed me until my man who was right there came on my show on, on phone and said, mm -hmm. said the same thing. Puff said, I don't care. Pac got to die. I don't care. Big got to die. Shook Knight can go to jail all I care. I'm tired of living my life like this. Something got to change. Now, he heard that from somebody. Mm. You can't, you, me being an investigator, me being an educator, me being around in the streets, you understand? You can't tell me he didn't get that from somebody. Who told him that? Mm. Pac got to die. Big got to die. We going to send Sid Knight to jail. Who told you that? Because you repeated it as you had heard it from somebody. And because of the incident and you ran that night, you was feeling it. And sadly, it all came to fruition. It all came to fruition. Now, when life after death happened, no pun intended, Rolling Stone wanted to put Biggie on the cover. But Diddy, being the selfish prick that he is, said, hey, man, that man's dead. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get that cover. Don't believe me? This is another excerpt out of the Rolling Stone. When Rolling Stone approached Bad Boy about a cover opportunity a few months after Biggie's unaliving, Burroughs claimed he advocated for the late rapper to take the spot. I was telling Sean, let's make it Biggie. You still have a chance for a cover in the future. Burroughs recalls he's like, no, he's dead. I'm putting out Combs' debut album, No Way Out, in July, I need to be on the cover of Rolling Stone, heartless. But then you're falling off the motorcycle saying, every breath you take, every move you make, you'll be missing him. And as you see, this is Diddy right here in the Versace draws in the White Sox hat. It's a tough world out here, man. Now, Loretta Wallace, the mother of Biggie Smalls, came out to finally say something about Diddy. And at first she started off talking about the Cassie situation where she said, I'm sick to my stomach. Wallace said about the allegations against Cone, I'm praying for Cassie, I'm praying for her mother. I don't wanna believe the things that I've heard, but I've seen the hotel video and I pray that he apologizes to her. Now we all know Diddy and Cassie are legally banned through an NDA not to speak about each other. So a public apology discussing their names will not happen. And after that, she will also be quoted by saying, I hope that I see Sean one day and the only thing I want to do is slap the daylights out of him. And you can quote me on that. She told Rolling Stones because I liked him. I didn't want to believe the awful things, but I'm so ashamed and embarrassed. And anytime an older woman says, <laughs> and you can quote me on that, she mean that shit. And we know the leader of the Diddy Hate Club, 50 Cent will respond, and he said, LOL, laughing emoji. I want to slap the shit out of him too. And of course he will go on to promote his brands. So let's give it a nice little discussion. Welcome to the LaFleur Lounge with it and hey man, I wanna smack the shit out of the diddler too. I think it's a line of people that just wanna line up and smack the hell out of Puff. Now, we all know that this zesty gangster uh, mogul, he's just been a menace to society. But imagine you being Loretta Wallace and reading these type of articles about your son and probably feeling like, damn, did this man really just kill my son and then he's just been walking around here parading like he misses them like they were close because a lot of people don't feel like they were really as close as they were and this would be proof if this is true i don't know how we can prove that but a lot of people are saying hey man they weren't really like that they weren't friends and i can imagine if you got bad business going on a friendship is not going and it all makes sense the theory does because you know what you're going to be bigger if i kill you off I'm gonna make more money. 
the battle over the rights he's not going to be here to represent and just relentlessly try to get all his publishing back so it was a major play hip-hop had never seen no shit like that at the time and they said he was the one that off tupac so i mean if he, he he's basically somebody who's had all of the shit that's coming to him coming for a long time i'm surprised how long diddy's been out here doing all the things that he's done but i guess that money that power that's what it does for you man there are some higher ups like gene deal said who gave him that idea diddy was just somebody running a parent company somebody over him told him hey this is one of the ways that you should do this this man gotta go this man gotta go in return he's gonna go to jail we gonna get him locked up on something so i don't know it all sounds a little funky to me and i'm not mad at loretta wallace really she should shoot him no she should dude yeah she could she should shoot him and send him to jail that's what i think i think he should get everything that he did to everybody he should get abused he should get shot he should get uh uh whatever happened mistreated they should take his money away you know what i'm saying they should take the money from his sons now his daughters uh you know that we ain't gonna do that to them but somehow everything that he's done to everybody should happen to him niggas need to take his publishing the locks have him begging on the radio hey can i get my publishing back i want to see diddy crumble slowly i don't want to see him go to prison and unalive himself that's not good enough i want him to live with everything that he's created that's what i want and i'm with it i want this uh, uh this this show this series did he do it that 50 cents dropping i want that shit to be 32 episodes 32 i want it to be a lot i want everything i want everything to come out i want his son to just because his son made that stupid ass rap saying you went to the wrong house i want that nigga to suffer too i want him to suffer too he talking about he they talk about he out here date raping uh women trying to be at work and and make their hard-earned money you traumatize them you need to go and if your other sons is doing the same thing, they need to go. If they saw it and didn't do nothing, they need to go. The bodyguards that saw it and didn't say nothing need to go. I want everybody to suffer. So y'all let me know what y'all think, man, about this situation, man. How y'all think that she should slap them? A backhand? Overhand? Like Gorilla Pimp style? Y'all let me know down below what y'all thinking. What y'all think of that rap, man? Yeah, I'm going to keep dropping bangers, man. We out, baby. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Boom!